The uh, Simpson matter, record to reflect, the defendant is again present before the court with counsel, Mr. Shapiro, Mr. Cochran, Mr. Douglas, Mr. Bailey, people represented by Ms. Clark, Mr. Darden, Mr. Gordon. Jury is not present. Counsel, I have just received a letter dated February the 6th. Is Mr. Blazier still here? There he is. Yes, sir. Uh, on the uh, DNA issue, which I have not had the opportunity to read yet, and I also received a uh, fax from the defense regarding the same subject. And counsel, I'll, uh, I take it, Mr. Blazier, you wanted to uh, file some responsive letter? Yes, Your Honor, there's additional argument in that letter, and we'd like to respond to that, and I will try to do that by the end of business today or tomorrow at the latest. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, also on the issue of the uh, Roy Firestone videotape, did counsel have the opportunity to discuss the matter with the uh, representatives of that uh, television program? Yes, good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Cochran. had an opportunity to discuss the matter with the representatives of the Roy Firestone show. And with regard to the foundational questions that I had, I've been satisfied with regard to that, and I've shared that with Mr. Darden. That does not at all alleviate the other problem, I feel, of, of 352 relevance or whatever, but at least this regarding the foundation, I had my questions answered. All right, are you willing to stipulate then to the foundation, at least as to the authenticity, date, and time of that interview? We're willing to so stipulate, yes, Your Honor, but not to the, uh, the other issues. Not that waiving any of your other objections. Right, that's All correct, right. Your Honor. Is that stipulation acceptable to the people? Yes. I didn't hear the language. Stipulate to the authenticity, date, and time of the interview. That's recorded on the video. Uh, Your Honor, you, you heard the stipulation. That's all I care to say. Yeah. Your Honor, in addition to that, I should point out that um, I was provided with a copy of that uh, video by Mr. Darden today and also a copy of the infamous long-lost uh, recital uh, video from, uh, that was taken June 12, 1994, sometime after 6.30. Mr. Darden has apparently given me a copy of that this morning. I've not seen it. I want the record to reflect that. All right. Thank you. Noted. Thank you, Counsel. All right, counsel, anything else we need to take up before we uh, invite the jury to rejoin us? Uh, I'd, li I'd like to approach you with the report on what I'm happy All right, with the report, please.
Mr. Shapiro, do you have your computer running? Uh, I have it on, but I don't do it. I'm just trying to get it on the case here. So Do you have the test? Uh, yeah, yes. Thank you. All right, Deputy Magnar, let's have the jury, please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I received a, a note from uh, juror number 1290, which I uh, suspect represents the uh, views of the jurors, and I'll discuss that with the staff and the attorneys. And as you know, I've, I've tried to respond to your requests or any concerns that you have, and it, it may take me a day or two, uh, but I will uh, address this issue for you. All right, let's resume with Denise Brown. Ms. Brown, would you come forward, please? And would you resume the witness chair, please? All right. Good morning, Ms. Brown. You're reminded you're still under oath. All right. Would you pull the microphone close to you, please? All right. Mr. Darden, do you wish to continue your direct exam? <coughs> yes, I do, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Ms. Brown, when we left off uh, last Friday, you told us about uh, the crotch grabbing incident at the Red Onion. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And you also talked to us about an incident that occurred after you and your sister Nicole and Ed McCabe returned to the defendant's house after an, an evening at the uh, La Cantina. Yes, recall I did. That? Do you also recall telling us that? Was that an objection? Yes, that's an objection. Let's say objection then. Counsel, you don't need to uh, directly address counsel. Thank you. And you also told us that after you told the defendant that he took your sister for granted that pictures began flying off the walls? Yes, they did. Okay. All right, let's, let's pick up there okay, okay. from that point on. Uh, the pictures that you uh, mentioned last Friday, where were those pictures located? Uh, they were going up the stairs, up the staircase to the second story. Okay. And had you seen those pictures before? Oh, sure, okay. many times. Okay. How many pictures were there? Oh, I think there's about three or four rows going up like this and all the way up the staircase. Okay. And uh, who was depicted in those photographs? It was family members. Brown family members? Well, Brown families, OJ's family, um, a lot of different pictures. Okay. And you mentioned that, that pictures began flying off the walls. How, how were those pictures removed or how did they come flying off the wall? O.J. was walking up the hall and he, or up the staircase, and he started throwing them. He took them off the wall and started throwing them down. And was he saying anything? Did the defendant say anything as he threw those? Uh, uh, he wanted her out of his house. That's he, what the defendant said? He wanted her out of his house, and he continued going up the stairs, and he grabbed the clothes out of her closet and started throwing them down onto the foyer where we were, down on the bottom. and. Uh, came back down, he grabbed Nicole, he threw her up against the wall, and um, then he grabbed her, and the only thing I remember is that it was, he looked so, his whole facial structure changed. Okay. Everything about him changed. Okay, let me stop you there. Non-responsive. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the witnesses' comments regarding facial structure and change of expression is stricken from the record as it is, was not in response to the question. You're to disregard that question and that answer. Excuse me, Mr. Darden. Okay. Okay. Uh, did you see the defendant's face immediately after you told him that he took your sister for granted? Yes, I did. Okay. And what, if anything unusual, did you notice about his face at that time? At that time, he got very upset and he started screaming. Now, was, was his anger manifested in any way other than the, the fact that he became a, a, other than the fact that he began screaming? 
Yeah, his whole facial structure changed. I mean, everything changed about him. Okay, well, when you say his facial structure changed, what do you, what do you mean? Elaborate on that for us, please. It was a calm, quiet, normal conversation, like we were sitting here right now, and then all of a sudden it turned into the eyes, got real angry. Um, it was his, his whole jaw, everything started, you know, his whole face just changed completely when he got upset. Um, it wasn't as if it was O.J. anymore. He looked like a different person, and that's what Nicole had always said when he gets angry. Let me stop you there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're to disregard the last portion of the answer uh, comments as to what Nicole had said about the defendant's behavior or facial uh, structure. Ms. Brown, Sorry. if you would, would you please listen carefully to Mr. Darden and defense counsel's uh, question. Please answer as precisely as you can, and please don't volunteer any information. Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Now, had you seen the defendant angry on other occasions? Not like this. Okay. Well, this change in his facial structure that you just testified to, is that something that commonly happens when the defendant becomes angry? I had never seen it like this before, no. So that was the first time you'd ever seen him get that angry? Yes. Okay. Can I have one moment, Your Honor? Where did you and Mr. McCabe and your sister go after the defendant threw the three of you out of his house? We um, went to the Beverly Hills Hotel. Okay. And why did you go to the Beverly Hills Hotel? That's where he was staying, Ed McCabe. Okay. And were you staying there as well? We stayed there that night, yes. Okay. And Ed McCabe was your boyfriend at the time? Yes, he was. And did you spend the night at the Beverly uh, Hills Hotel that night? Yes, we did. Did your sister Nicole also spend the night with you that night? Yes, she did. Did she ever return to the house? She did the next morning. Okay. Did you try and stop her from returning to the house? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I told her. I told her that she shouldn't go back. She says, I'm not going back. I'm just going to go pick up a few things. Did she say if she'd return back to the hotel? Yes, she did. She said she was going to come back to you? Yes, she did. Did she come back? No, she didn't. Did you report that incident to the police at the time? No, I did not. Okay. Did she? I don't think so. And did Ed McKay report it to the police? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. Did you consider reporting the incident to the police? I didn't. Why I not? told her, I, I just told her, I said, you can't hold go. On, hold on. The question was, did you report it to the police? Did you consider reporting to the police? The answer is yes or no. No. All right, thank you. Mr. Doug. And why didn't you report it to the police? Because she said she'd take care of it. And if you recall, what year was it that this incident occurred? Um, God, it was in the early 80s, 82, 83 maybe. Do you know the exact date? No, I don't. Okay. Could it have been later than 82 or 83? I, I know it was the early 80s. I don't think it was later. Have one moment, Your
Um, Ms. Brown, after your sister Nicole told you that she would handle it, uh, why didn't you take it upon yourself to, 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 to take further steps toward notifying the police? Could you repeat that, please? Okay. Well, your sister told you that she would handle it, correct? Right. Okay. Did she handle it? I guess in her own way she did. Well, you told us that you expected her to, re her to return to the hotel, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Well, when she didn't return to the hotel, did you, did you do anything uh, 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 toward uh, finding out why she didn't return to the hotel? I, you know what? I really don't remember. I just told her to come back. Okay. Well, did you do anything toward finding out if she was okay? Oh, we had talked later on, yeah. Ms. Brown, I'd like to show you three photographs. And these photographs have already been marked. Uh, people's 9, 10, and 11 for identification. May I approach you? You may. Let me show you three Polaroid photographs. Yeah. Have you seen these photographs before? Yes, I have. Do each of these photographs depict your sister? Excuse me? Is your sister shown in each of these three photographs? Yes, she is. Yon, if I could put these up on the Almo. Thanks. Oh. Showing equals nine for identification. Ms. Brown, do you see people's nine there on the monitor next to the witness stand? Yes, I do. Is that a picture of Nicole? Yes, it is. Okay. Directing your attention to her. Where is it? Is there a red dot? Directing your attention to the left eye, Nicole's left eye and people's nine for identification. Do you see an injury there at her left eye? Yes, I do. When was the first time you saw this photograph? I saw this in her bathroom drawer. When I opened up her bathroom drawer. Was this a bathroom drawer located in the house at Rockingham? Yes, it was. It was in her bathroom. Whose bathroom was it? Nicole's. It was Nicole's bathroom? Yes. She showed the photograph to you? No, I just saw it in the drawer and I took it out and I looked at it. And did you show the photograph to her? Yes, she was standing right there with me at the time. And did you and she discuss the photograph? Yes, we did. What did she tell you about the photograph? Counselor, you approach you, please.
And Ms. Brown, I'm going to need to uh, discuss something with the lawyers. I'm going to ask you to step out of the courtroom. All right. Thank you. I'm, I'm a little concerned. Uh, we're back in open court out of the presence of the jury. Mr. Darden, I'm a little concerned here. People's nine. Um, the court ruled as to the 1101B incidents, and there were certain specific incidents that were mentioned uh, in the various motions that the court has specifically ruled upon, yes or no. Uh, what's your offer of proof as to People's Nine? Your Honor, People's Nine, the photograph which depicts Nicole Brown, the one that was just on the Elmo, is a photograph that was recovered from the safe deposit box along with the 1989 photos as well as the uh, Herald Examiner newspaper article from 1989, the newspaper article that, in, that, that described uh, the January 1, 1989 charges and beating. All right. Well, we all know from uh, apocryphal stories that uh, Polaroid photos can be dated to a certain degree by the uh, code on the back of the photograph indicating the date of manufacture, distribution, blah, 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 about the photograph. What have you found out from Polaroid regarding those photographs? As far as when the film was produced? Yes. 1978 or 79? That film also, they'll tell you about freshness and how long the battery pack will stay alive, and it, that appears to be an SX-70 type Polaroid photo. Okay, I have no information uh, about battery packs and how long so how are film we going, will stay alive. So how are we going to tie People's Nine to an incident that the court has ruled admissible under 1101B? <coughs> Your Honor, there is the, the issue of the defendant's attempt to minimize what happened in January 1989. And as I've indicated to the court before, it's our position that Ms. Brown left a trail, a trail of evidence indicating that there had been a pattern or history of abuse between her and the defendant. I think her state of mind is relevant given uh, the defense posture and cross-examination of Ron Shipp. Uh, I think that Ms. Brown's state of mind uh, is going to be relevant in these proceedings in the area or on the issue of why uh, immediately after the, uh, the murders, uh, she told the New York Times that she didn't know anything about uh, uh, Nicole having been abused. And these photographs are no surprise to the defense. These photographs were presented to the court and to defense counsel during the domestic violence uh, motions and hearings. Well, Mr. Darden, the fact that it's not a surprise doesn't make it automatically admissible, would okay. you agree? There, okay. There's never been an objection to the, having these photographs uh, mentioned here in open court. They were shown to Ron Shipp just the day before yesterday. Well, let me ask you another question since we're obviously going to talk about People's 10 and People's 11. What is your, how are you going to connect this up to any of our incidents, 10 and 11? I'm sorry, how am I going to connect it up to? any of the incidents under 1101B that the court has deemed admissible for the purpose of this hearing. I don't think this is an 1101B issue, frankly, but as far as the other two photographs, Well, uh, counsel, we can't 11. just show horrible photographs without tying it to something relevant to this case. Denise Brown's state of mind is relevant, and so is Nicole Brown's state of mind. They made Nicole Brown's state of mind relevant as it relates to domestic violence. They've introduced evidence that she was drinking, or that, uh, or that the 1989 incident occurred because she was drinking. They attempted to minimize the defendant's conduct every step along the way, Your Honor. And they've also attempted to apply to the jury or suggest to the jury that, that it was an isolated incident. All right, what's the, uh, my recollection of looking at 9, 10, and 11 is that the serial, not the serial number, the manufacturer's code on each of these Polaroid photographs is very different one from another. What is your information as to the date of manufacture of the film of, the, of 10 and 11? 10 and 11 uh, are manufactured in 88 or 89, but, but Denise Brown is going to testify to having taken 10 and 11 herself. All right, she is the actual photographer then? Yes. 
part. So your offer of proof is that this is relevant to a state of mind of Nicole Brown Simpson. As well as Denise Brown. Now, Mr. Mr. Shapiro has been kind enough to share with us his stack of, of uh, his stack of newspaper articles that relate to everything Denise Brown has ever said about this case. And I think we need to explain to the jury why Ms. Brown felt initially that her sister was not the subject of abuse. And I think it's going. To, I think other things that have been uh, shown to the court and to counsel, things that have actually been objected to and things that the court has actually advised the people to proceed with caution. Uh, uh, the problem one will become Mr. relevant. Mr. Darden, I, I have, the problem I have, though, is that you're offering a photograph for which there is no foundation as to date, time, and a connection with any one of the 1101B incidents. That's our problem. And that's why I say I don't see it as an 1101B issue. I see it as a state of mind issue for Denise Brown and for Nicole Brown. And as it relates to, the, to, Denise, to uh, uh, Nicole Brown's state of mind, the fact that she is keeping in her safe deposit box these photographs along with her will and these newspaper articles, uh, we think it's all relevant. Not under 1101B, but we think that Nicole Brown's state of mind is relevant. All right, let me hear from the defense. Mr. Shapiro. Thank you very much, Your Honor. First, Your Honor uh, has been told by the prosecutors that these three photographs were from 1989 when they were discussed uh, during our hearings regarding the relevancy of uh, domestic discord uh, issues. And with that, we had no objection. We certainly have no objection to the two photographs that were taken allegedly by Denise Brown. Uh, in 1989 as being uh, similar photographs to those that have been shown uh, to a previous witness and taken by the Los Angeles Police Department. However, for uh, the prosecutor to come to court and offer a witness and flash a photograph without knowing what that witness was going to say about the photograph and telling Your Honor that we haven't asked her. Uh, I guess she's going to say they were 1985. I don't know what she'll say. I have to ask her. Uh, is something that is not permitted by our rules of procedure. Further, uh, the fact that uh, I gratuitously turned over a extensive Lexus search regarding Denise Brown and her public statements, uh, both in newspapers as well as about 10 television show interviews that she did, as well as excerpts from a book uh, that she uh, participated in, was only to aid the prosecution so they could not claim surprise and so that they would be prepared should those issues come up. However, I have not yet asked a question, and uh, I don't see how the prosecution can uh, possibly know what questions I'm going to be asking, uh, if any, of Ms. Brown. Well, counsel, my, my concern is not necessarily anticipating what the cross-examination of Ms. Brown is going to be. My, my concern is that showing the jury a relatively graphic photograph of the victim in this matter, one of the victims in this matter, uh, who obviously appears to have been beaten from this photograph without being able to tie it to any of the incidents that we're talking about here. That's my concern. That, that is our concern, and we're reluctant to object. But when they start putting up material, uh, letting the court know that this is a 1989 incident, and then saying they can't establish a foundation, they don't know when it was taken, and they haven't even asked their witness, uh, is conduct that should not be permitted. The question is now, what is the remedy that can be done after this photograph has been shown and displayed for uh, several minutes? And when I initially went up to sidebar, uh, Your Honor will recall that I asked that the picture be taken down immediately because of those concerns, and uh, Your Honor did uh, have that picture removed, but it still uh, took a period of time. And I believe that uh, irreparable harm has been done and tremendous uh, bias to Mr. Simpson by deliberately displaying a photograph where they knew 
there is absolutely no foundation in that it could not be admissive, admitted into evidence and was improper to show. Also, Mr. Cochran reminds me uh, regarding the state of mind, uh, Denise Brown's state of mind is irrelevant to these proceedings. She's not on trial. She's a witness so far to three events. And her state of mind and what she felt and what she wanted to do uh, is totally irrelevant to anything. If we uh, are so sloppy as to bring it up on cross-examination, then perhaps the people might claim the door was opened. But to uh, try to start with a preemptive strike and to anticipate by bringing in clearly inadmissible material is uh, not permitted and uh, should not be sanctioned by this court. And there should be a serious, serious uh, misconduct sanction rendered against the prosecution for this behavior. Such as? I think to tell the jury to disregard the photograph uh, has no effect whatsoever. I think a uh, more serious uh, sanction uh, is in order, and I would like to have a moment to confer with my colleagues as to what that might be, and also to put in a call to uh, Mr. Dershowitz, who is uh, viewing these proceedings long distance. May I respond? Well, look, we'll allow counsel to confer for a moment. Pardon? Let's allow counsel to confer for a moment. <laughs> Mr. Bailey, it would thrill me to death if you didn't do that while we're still in session. Your Honor, we would like to take the recess at this point in time to confer with Mr. Dershowitz and Mr. Ullman, as well as uh, my co-counsel here in court. Well, I think we've got enough horsepower here to figure this out, don't we? I don't know. Your, you, you know, Your Honor, uh, I, have, I have been uh, practicing for a long time, and I've never seen anything uh, quite this extraordinary where a photograph that is clearly inadmissible is just thrown up on a giant screen television for the jury to see. Without, without even knowing, I mean, Mr. Darden is on the record as saying, I haven't asked the witness about this. I don't know what her answers would be. I know. Hold on, hold on. And uh, the sanctions, certainly the, the easiest sanction is simply disregard it. Well, most of us who have been practicing for a long period of time know that not only is that not effective, all it does is serve in some instances to reemphasize the point. And perhaps there should be some sanctions that all issues of domestic uh, discord uh, be stricken from this record and that we move on to the real issues of this case, and that is who committed these horrible murders. And I think that might be an appropriate sanction under these uh, circumstances, that the people uh, will have all of the evidence that they have presented stricken because of this type of conduct. Could you give us yeah, about two minutes here? Mr. Darden. Even approach anything that can be construed as misconduct. These photographs were shown to the court. They were shown to the defense a month ago. They were presented Darden, here in open Darden, court, and they no. were shown to a witness, and they Mr. were Darden, marked. Mr. Darden, please, let me ask you a question. The problem I have is that we've shown the jury this photograph without a foundation as to where and when this photograph was taken or by whom, and we don't know if it ties up to any of the incidents that I've indicated are admissible under the 1101B ruling. Did the court... Did the court rule it inadmissible, the recovery of three Polaroid photographs from a, from a safe deposit box? It may be irrelevant. Okay. And if it's it, irrelevant, the inflammatory nature of that particular photograph, which you have to admit is a pretty strong photograph. That's why we have the learned counsel on the defense, for the defense, Your Honor. They could have objected. They have an evidence list just like I have. That's they, why that's we're here. Right. That's right. They, sure, they, they certainly didn't. They didn't object to it. They've known about it for a month. They saw it last week, and they didn't object to it. But now they object to it today after the jury sees it? Well, now we find out there's no foundation There for is it. a foundation for it. Denise Brown is going to testify to having seen that photograph. It ends up in a safe deposit box, along with the 1989 photographs. The defense has indicated that they're going to call Lenore Walker, and if the court reads Lenore Walker's writings as it relates to domestic violence, the fact that the victim, 
left a trail, a trail just like the trail left by Nicole Brown, uh, uh, is very relevant, extremely relevant. It's going to be relevant as to Lenora Walker's opinion when she arrives Why here. Why isn't this a rebuttal issue? Why is this in the case in chief if it's not one of the 1101B issues, one of the 1101B incidents that I've allowed? Because it, it's relevant as to Denise Brown's state of mind. It's also Denise relevant Brown's as state to, of mind is irrelevant. Okay. It's also relevant as to uh, take that to the, the bank. Uh, pardon? Take that to the bank. <laughs> is that an indicated ruling? <laughs> it's a strong inclination. <laughs> At any event. At least at this point, uh, to establish sure. Denise Brown is here to testify to the nature of the relationship as to three specific incidents. Can, can this I? photograph is not related to any of those three incidents, so it appears to me to be irrelevant. Well, what I, concerns me is the rather inflammatory nature of that photograph. And to show it to, show it to the jury without any foundation for it uh, sure. is more than inappropriate. Your Honor, everyone understands when those photographs were recovered, Everyone understands that in the photographs, uh, doesn't make it admissible uh, that they know about it, okay. counsel. Okay. Okay. Can I? Can Go ahead and finish. Can we put? Can we put uh, two photographs up on the uh, screen for you for a moment, so that I can just make one other one other point sure. on the issue of their failure to object. <laughs> I see number nine and what else, Mr. Uh, Fertlow? It's also number ten. ten. All right. What's the point? Okay. The point is this: look at the age of Nicole Brown in, in number nine, and look at and look at the photograph marked number uh, is eleven. Ten. Uh, number ten. Okay. No one's hiding anything from the defense. They know that Denise Brown saw this photograph. They know that Denise Brown or rather that uh, the photograph was taken out of the 1989 safe deposit box. You can look at the photographs and clearly discern that she is younger. She appears youthful in people's nine for identification. If they wanted to object to the, to the introduction of these photographs, they could have. They are. Okay. Yeah, after, after they've been shown to the jury. I mean, did I just throw it on the Alamo and then flip the switch and have it jump, jump, uh, uh, jump out there in front of the jury? Of course not. I even asked permission to put the thing on the Alamo. I mean, what more do they want? How, how many days or months do they need to formulate an objection? Maybe Mr. Dershowitz should come here from New York and help him uh, decide when to object or I not. think he's in Boston. Big uh, difference. If I might, might just respond to my Mr. learned uh, counsel. What First about of all, the two-attorney rule, Your Honor? What about the, the, the one-attorney rule on an issue? He was the one who responded to this. Your Honor, I'm sorry. No, actually, actually, I'm incorrect, Mr. Shapiro. Yeah, that's right. Mr. I'm Shapiro. addressing a slightly different issue, Your Honor, than what Mr. Mr. No, Shapiro No, we're did. talking about the same photograph, all counsel. Right. Side, Your Honor. Much more trial experience. I, you know, Mr. Darden, thank you. Mr. Shapiro. Your Honor, the prosecution during uh, their presentation on these issues told Your Honor these photographs were 1989. I don't think there's anything more to say. Uh, if we're going to call an expert in as to being able to tell the age of a woman when she has uh, been out at a New Year's party and uh, according to the evidence, been drinking and been involved in a domestic dispute and then show a picture of her made up uh, that could be the next day after. Uh, I don't think uh, there is any room for any doubt that this court has been told, counsel has been told, and uh, I'd like Mr. Darden to, to tell Your Honor that he didn't tell you these were all 1989. These were all... in 89. They all relate to the 1989 incident. I think that's the only conclusion we can draw given what was contained in the safe deposit box, Judge. I mean, it's, cl it's clear to me that what uh, Nicole Brown was doing was, one, identifying her future murderer, her future killer, and she was trying to establish for us, for myself and Mr. Gordon and Ms. Clark, proof of a pattern of abuse. And it's, well, and it's, Darn, that may very well be. But I think that comes in the people's rebuttal case 
after you see what Dr. Walker says, after you've established that through your own experts and through the cross-examination of Dr. Walker, but just throw up a photograph that we can't date to any of the incidents that I've allowed is not appropriate. That's the court's ruling. Well, I think their failure to object no. No. is a way Castle, of it. When you when the court allows 1101 be it be evidence you have to be you as the prosecution have to be very conservative as to how you go about doing that if you can't tie this photograph to any one of those three incidents that uh, Denise Brown can testify to that photograph is not coming in all right let's yes The reason uh, that one might assume that that photograph was thrown up uh, relates back to the testimony of uh, a police officer named Edwards who testified that he took photographs, but the photographs did not adequately depict the injuries as he observed them because they were taken with Polaroid film and because Nicole Brown Simpson did not want to go downtown for proper photographs. Oh, we're talking about sanctions. Well, I'm, I'm leading to that. The inference now is this is the way she really looked in 1989. And I think the sanction should be that the jury uh, should strike from their deliberations any reference to an incident in 1989, any reference to any injuries that were suffered by Nicole Brown Simpson and any photographs that they have seen uh, or any testimony depicting those injuries. All right. Your Honor, when we began this trial, the, the court ordered the defense to provide us an opportunity to look at their exhibits. And we were given a nanosecond to do that. And when we realized that there was a problem with one of those exhibits and objected, the court found that we had waived the right to object because the objection was untimely, as the court ruled. I think the court should find the same in this situation. They knew what Exhibit 9 was. They've seen it. They've had it in their hands. They've possessed it. It was an, it was an issue in the DV hearings. I mean, to, to, to sanction us now. Do you have a foundation for this photograph? Yes, it is the photograph that Denise Brown saw in the 80s at Rockingham. Doesn't help us. Thank you. Let's have the jury, please. You'll see in about 30 seconds. <laughs> 